Now you also have a show coming out that's also set in the Karoo. Yes. Um, you and the Karoo. I look, yeah, I've got the Karoo face apparently. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what that means, desert face. Yeah, a really cool show um, for CakeNet called The mm. Book Club. Um, really fantastic 13 um, episode drama, comedy, drama, dramedy. Um, about a Cape Town hipster who's a frustrated writer and super cynical and just wants cappuccinos and flat whites in Brea Street. Then she's <laughs> basically myself. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. I wasn't uh, going to say it, but you did. And then um, his grandmother passes away and, and she uh, has a will that says if he wants to inherit, he needs to stay in the crew for a year. Um, and it's just this beautiful journey of... of actually falling in love with the place and the people. I mean, the people frustrate him initially immensely because they're like country mm. people and he's a city slicker guy. Um, and it's just how, how he inf infiltrates and makes a difference without even knowing it to these people's lives and how they affect him as well. Um, yeah, just a really, I, I really enjoyed working on that particular production as well, yeah. How would you react to being the city slicker that you are if you had to go and live in the Karoo for a year under um, similar circumstances? I think it would have to be a substantial amount of money <laughs> that I would have to inherit. <laughs> um, no, it's a nice getaway, but, but mm. I am really, yeah, I am a city, a city person. So I, I enjoy going away on, on little out, you know, breaks and things to the countryside or a mountain, but a year, a not so sure. A year is a long time. It's a long time. It's a long time yeah. to, to be yeah. just there with nothing around <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's nice for, for a little, Mm. period of time but but I, I thrive on like energy on the energy and the hustle and bustle mm. and stimulation um, of a city so it would, yeah. uh, it would, it would have to be a, a, a massive estate. <laughs> now talking about traveling I read that yeah. you went backpacking in Southeast Asia on your own. Yes that wasn't the plan. Okay. But it, it worked out that way and that was the best three months I could have asked mm. for to be alone um, doing that. Um, I, was, I was quite young, I was 19, mm. and my idea was to go to Europe, backpack through Europe. I did the whole London thing, we were like four friends, and we were going to go backpack through Europe. And I arrived at the embassy, I was like, I'm going backpacking. And they're like, cool, where's your itinerary, where's your flights, where's your booking, where's your... It's like, no, no, I'm just going backpacking. And they're like, get out. <laughs> You're <embassy."> going home. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was like, hmm, where can I go that I don't need a visa? Mm -hmm. So it was Thailand, so I, and, and my brother lives in Vietnam, and Cambodia, you could also just arrive at the border and get mm. a visa. Um, so me and my friend were like, we're going to do that. So I flew out three weeks before he did, and I never saw him. He just never came. That's a bad <laughs> friend. Um, yeah. Are you still friends with him? Yeah, yeah, I am. Okay, but, well, he's not that bad then, I, I guess, since yeah. he's just still friends. I, secretly, I thought he probably wouldn't come. Okay. Knew. He's that kind of guy. Okay. Shame. But, um, but that ended up being the best three months ever. Just, yeah, making friends as you go along, and if you don't feel like doing anything, you don't do anything just hang around and walk the city streets or whatever it was really amazing and then to be put into such a different world than what we're used to so mm. you know it's not it's eastern but it's also not eastern it's south they've got a very different way of you know of living and that was really amazing to experience that when you think back to that time what's your most memorable experience or most interesting i know a lot of interesting things happened in southeast yeah, asia yeah i think definitely um so in Cambodia, I sp uh, there's, a, there's a town called Siem Reap, mm. and the surrounds have the Angkor temples um, where Tomb Raider was shot. Those, I mean, they are, th I think that's the biggest religious buildings in the world, a collection of them. I think they're like 200 temples. And I remember, so you get a, a local guide for the day for like $5 on a motorbike, and he you know, takes you around. And we were, we were going through the, the rainforest for about 45 minutes and then all of a sudden the, it clears and the, and the woods become less and there's just this monstrosity of a building. And I remember that moment going, wow, that's the first time I've seen something that's literally taken my breath away. Yeah. yeah. When you, you know, when you see these, these landmarks like the Eiffel Tower, or what, they're amazing. But you kind of know what to expect in that mm. moment where you're just going through the jungle and, and you look up and there's this, this thing. Yeah, that was my absolute highlight. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. I feel like everyone needs to travel and uh, yeah, have their and own moments like that. Mm, and it's really affordable. It's really mm. cheap. I was on $25 a day. That was my budget. And I could live, eat, travel, do things, you know. Wow. It was fun, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's like a dollar for food, $3 a night for a bed. Yeah, it was amazing. What tip would you give to someone who wanted to go traveling on their own? Um, 
I'd say don't prepare too much. Just buy buy uh, buy a Lonely Planet book. That is my that's like the little Bible. It's like the Bible of traveling. Yeah. Mm. And and then just go go follow your follow your instincts. Don't. It's I know it's difficult to to not you know have hotel bookings and have this and an itinerary. But it's nice to kind of sometimes just throw that out the window. It's an incredible feeling when yeah. you throw that out the window and just totally just do whatever you yeah. feel like doing that. Yeah, day. and you're open to meeting the most mm. amazing people who are on a similar kind of journey, and it's mm. lovely to share like a, a day or two with that person and then going on. Yeah, I really love that. Now we're winding down to the end of the year. Do you have any holiday plans? Um, not really. I have just a week. I'm going to the Orange River over New mm. Year's. That's it. Um, Cape Town over, over summer is really busy in terms of commercial season mm. and that only ends so literally the day before Christmas. So you kind of push through and you want to work hard. until then mm. um, and then you take a little extended break and then the 3rd of January you start all over again. But I'm going to the Orange River. Geez, you're a busy man. Uh, I try to be. I get, I get, I easily get, I, I get bored easily. So if I'm not constantly working or doing something, yeah, I get a little bit dissuaded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like I said earlier in the interview, you've been nominated for Best Instagram Account and Juiciest Male. Man, male. Man, male. Juicy, oh, yeah. They're both the same. <laughs> 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 so what I want you to do for me is mm. to look into that camera and tell everyone why you are the juiciest oh, and no. the Instagramist. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I am the illest <laughs> Instagrammer. Um, please go vote for me. I'm also very juicy. Not here, here. Um, as you will see if you go into my account. Just juice flowing everywhere. It's like a summer cocktail, just juice. <laughs> <laughs> Is this R rated? I, <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing so hard I was crying. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. So nice here. to be here. Thank you.